Tonight from your local election headquarters, Democrats running for governor faced off live in a debate on WPRI 12 just one week away from the Rhode Island primary. I'm Shannon Heggie. I'm Mike Montecalvo, former Secretary of State Matt Brown, former CBS executive Helena Folks, current Secretary of State Nellie Gorbea, and Governor Dan McKee took the stage at Rhode Island College. The live televised debate was moderated by Target 12 investigators Tim White and Ted Nisi. Target 12 Steph Machado was also there, and she joins us now live from Rhode Island College to break it all down. Steph? Well, the four Democrats faced off on the economy, their own political controversies, and even had to take a pop quiz about their knowledge of state government. But the debate began with the news of the day. On the heels of Monday's flooding that shut down Interstate 95 for hours, Governor Dan McKee defended his administration's response, while the other three candidates said they would have acted differently. Do you feel like you could have done more knowing that, the, that, that flooding was a potential in the forecast? The Rain was forecasted. Did you know that 11 inches of rain were going to fall in an hour in the city of Cranston? No. So, yes, they responded the way they should under the circumstances. Uh, they cleared the roads as quickly as they could be cleared. It was an inconvenience, but no one got hurt. People suffered. They were in their cars trapped with children, dogs, not knowing what was going on, and that was a real mistake. I do not blame him for the weather. That was quite unfortunate. What I blame him for was the response to it. My parents were stuck in 95 for three and a half hours during that flood storm with no indication. We had no information as to what was going on and when could they get out. So I take this very seriously. I know the lack of communication because we experienced it, experienced it first and foremost. I will replace Director Alvedi with a new Director of Transportation who understands that the climate crisis is real, understands that we can and must take urgent action to address it. That includes ensuring that our infrastructure is safe and reliable. On the economy, the four listed what they think is Rhode Island's top challenge that needs solving for folks, small businesses. Gorbea said the housing crisis. Brown said people not having enough money to get by. And McKee said jobs. All four Democrats said they support banning assault-style rifles. And while McKee defended his support for the taxpayer-backed Pawtucket Soccer Stadium, the other three all said they would have voted against it. And McKee and Gorbea, also the, who are the only two sitting office holders in this debate, had to defend their administration's records. McKee on the ILO group contract controversy that's currently under federal investigation and Gorbea on the ballot mishap with the new voting machines that we reported on just last week. You can learn more about those issues and watch the full hour long debate right now on WPRI.com. Live in Providence, I'm Steph Machado, 12 News. Steph, thank you. Our team coverage of tonight's debate continues. It was the last opportunity for the candidates to square off in a live televised debate. Were any of the candidates able to change voters' minds, though? Target 12 investigator and debate moderator Tim White joins us now with analysis from the debate. I'm here alongside 12 News political analyst Joe Fleming. Joe, what stood out to you in this debate? Well, the big thing that stood out was the ILO question when uh, Governor McKee refused to say if his administration has received any subpoenas from the federal government. I mean, he said he personally has not, but he refused to say whether anybody in his administration has. Do you think that hurts him? I think that could possibly hurt him. Now, it's very late. We're only like seven, six days away from the general, from the primary. So I don't know if the other opponents can really use that too much, but I think it's not a strong point for Governor McKee. The tough question to answer answer is, you know, where, what did this do for undecided voters, the coveted undecided voters? Were any of the candidates able to move the needle? Well, the one who stood out to me was Helena Folks. She seemed to be very sharp tonight. She had a lot of the answers. She seemed well prepared. So I think she might have moved the needle somewhat. Again, we won't know the next Tuesday as far as how much she has moved the needle, but I think she had a good night tonight. As the incumbent governor, was Dan McKee under fire from the other candidates tonight? Oh, there's no question about that. They had the target on Dan McKee's back and they're going after Dan McKee. There's been no polling lately, so people are assuming that Dan McKee as an incumbent is the front runner and they're going after him and they're trying to bring him down tonight. All right, 12 News political analyst Joe Fleming, we will see you on primary night on 12 News. For now, I'm Tim White, 12 News. Tim, thank you, and you can check out WPRI.com right now for more debate coverage. Also on our website, key results from today's Massachusetts primary. Those results are also scrolling at the bottom of your screen. We'll give you a closer look at those races just ahead. And you can also stay up to date with our app. Download it now in your app store. 
Prior to our debate, a number of protesters demonstrated in support of gubernatorial candidate Luis Daniel Munoz. Munoz was not included in tonight's debate because he did not meet the debate criteria established by our parent company, Nexstar Media. It requires a candidate receives at least 5% support in an independent poll and also reports at least $50,000 in campaign fundraising.